These are five woodworking tools you'll never regret buying. Or you shouldn't anyway. Let's go. Number one, you'll never regret buying a quality table saw. Now I'm not talking specific brands, but what to look for on a saw to make sure you're getting a quality saw. Because if you buy the wrong saw, you'll regret it for a long time. Let me show you what to look for when buying a table saw. First and foremost, budget comes into play on almost any tool you buy. Table saw is one of those tools because they cost a lot, even lower end models like this one or budget friendly models like this one. But there's still some gems in there that you can really find good saws at this price point. I previously reviewed the Skill table saw, which is about $300, $350. This one runs about the same price. This is an eight and a quarter inch saw. In other words, the blade is an eight and a quarter inch. But what you specifically want to look for on any table saw, I don't care if it's $300 or $3,000, is the fence. Because without a quality fence, you're wasting your money. There's a couple of different styles of fence I'll recommend. On the lower budget end models, I highly recommend the rack and pinion fence like is on this DeWalt or on the saw stop job site saw or even on that skill model because those have that rack and pinion fence. In other words, they're gear driven. So the front and the back are gonna stay parallel all the time. And that's what you want. Because if that fence can't stay parallel to that miter slot and the blade, then your cuts are gonna be off and that's gonna throw off your whole project. The fence is absolutely the number one thing you wanna make sure is right on a table saw. Now, in my opinion, there's a few that I would recommend. Obviously, the skill that I previously reviewed, as well as the Stewalt. It's a really solid saw so far. And the saw stop, I had some issues at first, but I've worked those out and I can recommend that. If you have a little more budget and you want a little bit more saw, check out the Delta 36725T2 or the rigid make of that same saw. They have a T-style, Bessemeyer style fence, and those are fantastic. Personally, I think that's one of the best table saws under $1,000 that you can buy bar none. I used the Delta version of that for years. It is an excellent saw. And I absolutely love this three horsepower saw stop that I have. It is a fantastic saw. If it's in your budget, I highly recommend this one. The, everything about it is super nice, except the miter gauge, but that's kind of par for the course on most all table saws. The next thing you want to look for in a table saw is power and blade size. Most all of these table saws that I've recommended are going to have plenty of power to cut through anything you want. Hardwood, softwood, any of that stuff. This specific table saw has an eight and a quarter inch blade on it, which this is really made for the job site. It's made for ripping down two fours, plywood, etc. If you can afford it, I highly recommend getting the 10 inch table saw, 10 inch blade, mainly because you're going to be able to cut thicker stock like four by fours, things like that. You're gonna come closer to cutting through that stuff than something like this. However, this is an excellent saw if it's within your budget. If you're interested in any of the tools I show or talk about today, I'll put links in the description and in the pinned comments so you can go check them out. Peace out. <laughs> Number two on the list, you will never regret buying a quality router. I think routers are probably right behind a table saw as far as the most useful tools you can buy for your wood shop. I've actually got six routers in the shop that do various purposes, but this is collected over the course of almost six years now. So what I recommend actually for the very first time, the very first router you should buy, I like this one. This is a DeWalt. I have a whole review on this one that you can check out. It has a plunge base as well as a fixed base, and it's all for around $200. It's an extremely good deal for a very, very good router. Now, if you like cordless tools or if you're already in a battery platform, those are awesome too but they just don't have the power that a corded router is gonna have for cutting dados and larger routing operations. But the cordless ones are perfect for edge profiles, things like that. But the main thing is it needs to be variable speed because you need to be able to adjust the speed from low, low speed for bigger bits, high speed for uh, smaller bits, and also adjustability. So like this one is a fixed base, but you can raise and lower the base so that your bit is the height you need it. Same thing with these uh, smaller cordless routers. Both of these are adjustable. Most of these work similar where you just unlock them and then a twist knob raises and lowers the base plate so that you get the correct position that you want to put that edge profile on to cut that groove, whatever you're doing with them. Another thing you really need in a router is edge guides. This one comes with a edge guide. My rigid actually came with a edge guide. If you are buying a cordless router, make sure you get one that is brushless. A lot of the budget options aren't brushless. Now brushless cordless tools will actually give you a little bit more power as well as better battery life. So make sure you get brushless, spend a little extra money. You won't regret that. Number three on the list, 
dust extractors. Now, some people may be like, what? <laughs> but I'm telling you, you'll never regret buying a dust extractor, even if you don't realize it at the time, because these things collect upwards of 95% of the fine particles of dust, sometimes even more than that, that your tools are producing, like your sander, your saws, your routers, things like that. These things are absolutely necessary, in my opinion, in a workshop. There's a couple of different ones I have here. I've used this one for a very long time. This is the DeWalt. It actually has two HEPA filters built in. This is the Festool CT48E. I've got a full review on this one if you want to check that out. I really like this one because it does connect to all of the Festool tools without any issues. But I use this one for a long time and have been extremely happy with it. Still have it. This thing is really nice as far as collecting that dust, especially on your sander. One great thing about both the DeWalt and this Festool is they have power activated outlets on the dust extractor themselves. In other words, when you power up the tool, then the dust extractor automatically comes on. Doesn't matter if you've got it hooked to a miter saw, a sander, or track saw, or anything like that. That's one of the nice features I like about each of these. Now, if you're new, you may not know the difference between a dust extractor and a dust collector. They're two different tools for two different things for the most part. Now, you can use these to collect dust on some bigger tools, but they'll fill up really fast. So a dust collector is really for the bigger tools, the planer, the jointer, the table saw, things like that. Where a dust extractor is made for sanders, small saws, routers, things like that, because those are creating more fine dust, especially the sander. If all you have is a shop vac, then get one of these. This is just a dust separator. This one's a dust right separator that I used for a long time. Extremely good. You put one hose goes in one side, comes out the other. What happens, this collects the major chips and things like that, and it keeps your filters from stopping up on a regular shop vac. That's fast anyway. So this is a really good way to kind of add a little bit of dust collection into your shop without having to spend a whole bunch of money. It's a really good option. And while buying a dust extractor is about as much fun as going to the dentist, it's not something you just get excited about. It's one of those things that's gonna protect your lungs. You're gonna be able to woodwork longer in your life because that fine dust really does do a lot of harm to your lungs. So keeping that stuff out of your lungs, into the bags, you need one of these or whatever version you like. Next on the list is a quality miter saw. These are absolute workhorses in my shop anyway. This was one of the first major tool purchases I ever made. I saved up and I saved up to be able to buy this saw. While I do have another saw now, I have a hard time letting it go because it's so sentimental to me. This, this thing really produced a bunch of stuff for me. In my shop, it still works. I still use it. I just like it. There's a few things you wanna look for in a miter saw when you go to buy your first one or if you wanna upgrade. I've had my fair share of miter saws in this shop, including this DeWalt, as well as the Delta that I ran for about a year, and I've had some questions about where that went. I actually gave that away to a local woodworker who was in need, and since that was the newer of the two saws, that's the one I gave him. I've also used the Makita, although briefly, and then now the Festool. A miter saw can be one of the more expensive purchases for your shop, so you don't wanna regret that purchase. Number one, make sure you get one that has plenty of miter on it. So in other words, this one has 50, and it goes all the way to 60 on one side. That's gonna allow you to cut large angles, and you're gonna to need to do that in certain situations, especially when you're building furniture with X spaces, things like that. One thing to consider when buying a miter saw is the space savings design on this one. It has those rails that stick off the back, so you're gonna to have to give up quite a bit of space, especially if you want to mount this against the wall, where this, the Delta that I had, and then now it's made by Rigid, same saw, it basically had a knuckle joint that allowed it to flow freely and then you can mount it against the wall. And the Festool and the Makita both have forward rails so that allows you also to mount it flush against the wall. That is a very very good thing especially in smaller shops like this one and maybe one like you're working in. While I don't do it a whole lot I do need a beveling saw in other words a saw that allows you to bevel make bevel cuts left or right. I recommend a dual bevel if you can afford it. Is it necessary? No but it's nice to have. Another thing to consider that most saws have is a depth stop that allow you to cut grooves and things like that so you can do half laps. All of the saws that I've owned have had that and I've used that on all of them. It's a really nice feature to have when you need it. They all work slightly different, but this one has a little flip down and then an adjustable screw that will make sure it doesn't go too deep so you can get accurate cuts on all your grooves and half laps. One main consideration on miter saws, especially sliding miter saws, is the deflection. In other words, how much is the blade or the saw moving left and right at the extended point of that cut? Now this one is pretty solid. Like the DeWalt is really solid. It's got two rails going off the back. 
it will, if you push any, any sliding miter saw right or left with enough pressure, you will move the cut. You'll move that blade. But this one is a really good as far as silo goes. The Delta had a slight bit of deflection. So did the Festool. So did the Makita. They all have them. Just push straight down. But if it's really bad and really slack when you're looking at it in the store or something, then you want to avoid those. There's a quite a bit of debate on should you get a 10 inch miter saw, save a little bit of money or get the 12 inch version. I really prefer the 12 inch version while I have a 10 inch now. I haven't reached any limitations to that except when making those wider cuts. In other words, the long cross cuts. I really do miss the longer cross cutting capacity of this as well as the Delta on the Festool because the Festool is only a 10 inch saw. Number five, a drill press. I didn't really realize how much I was gonna use it when I bought this. I knew I wanted one for one specific purpose and that was for making my stove cover handles when I was making those. This is a Win 4210T. I did a review on it as soon as I got it several years ago, but this has been a nice, nice add-on to the shop. It's one of those things I never regret buying. Now understand when you buy a budget level drill press similar to this, you're gonna be giving up some things power being one of the main things. In other words, when you're drilling down into things, this, this has a tendency to stop sometimes. You have to back it up and then let it go back in easily. But overall, I've been very pleased with this wind model. What you're gonna to wanna to look for in a drill press is the amount of distance you can drill. Most all in this price range are gonna be belt driven and you can move the belts up and down to change the speeds. This one has a laser. Laser. And a light. I've never been able to get the laser to work, but the light does come in handy. From time to time. One thing I like about a bench top style drill press is the fact that it takes up minimal room and when I'm done with it I can store it away in the cabinet. What tools did I miss that you don't regret buying? Comment below let me know. If you like this video check out the five tools you will regret buying. Click in that box. Click in the box get you the big old virtual fist bump. Also another one of my favorite videos if you've already seen that one right there.